Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to another video here on the Wound Up channel. In this video, we're going to be checking out the Seiko Prospects Digituna the, um, with the reference number SBEP001. This watch can be purchased at Noman Watches for 270 US dollars and it's a digital version of a Tuna Seiko watch. So that's a first. It is quite an interesting watch and I've had it now for a few days and I figured this video can be merged um, into an unboxing and a mini review of this watch. However, before we get into it, of course, as always, I'm going to show you which watch I am wearing today. Uh, again, I am wearing the Seiko SBDC065, uh, a gorgeous diving watch from Seiko. If you're interested in this watch, I have made a review video of it just a few videos back, so make sure to check that out if you're interested in this watch. Now, let's get into this Seiko instead, also a Prospects watch, also 200 meters of water resistance, just like the SBDC065. Although at a much cheaper price, of course. So, we also have a cardboard box here. We get um, the manual and the certificate and all that stuff in there. Nothing too interesting, just a basic cardboard Seiko box. Nothing to see here, really. So let's just open this one up and... There we go. Here is the Digituna. So now, let's get some specifications out of the way. This features the Calibre S. S802 movement. It's it got a negative digital display. The case is made from resin. It's got a lug width of 20 millimeters it seems. It has 200 meters of water resistance and it's a whopping 50 millimeters in diameter and 14.1 millimeters thick. Now for the dimensions here I know they are very daunting to people. However, it turns out the lug to lug distance is also 49.9 millimeters which basically means this is just a basic round case, just like all the other tunas. So it's gonna wear quite a bit smaller than any other 50 millimeter watch with normal lugs would. As you can see, it does have a digital display, a negative one, so it's not, so it's not very bright here indoors, although it's fine. And it is a solar watch, so this can be charged up via light. And in terms of the functions, it's just like a basic G-Shock. It's very easy to use, just like any square G-Shock basically. It has all the same functionality as those. You click here to get to the different modes. Um, you have a timer, an alarm. However, this feature is quite interesting. It actually shows you the level of charge that the solar panels are bringing to the battery inside of here. And that is very interesting. Right now you can see it's level one out of, I think level 10 is the most. And what's also interesting about this watch is that in every different mode you will be able to see the current time down there so you will always know what the time is. And in terms of features that's basically it. As you can see the entire watch is made out of resin of course except for the back case part here which I think is made out of titanium actually which is quite interesting. So what's the quality like? Well it's not too good. I mean, for the price, I was expecting a bit more high-end materials. The case doesn't have to be in metal. However, the bezel is plastic and it does not click. It just slides and it's extremely hard to turn. And that's just stupid. It's, it's very hard, to, it's very hard to, to get a hold of and it slides does not click and the bezel is made out of plastic and, and it's very slippery and yeah, I've never used the bezel on this watch. And you might be wondering, well, can you even use the bezel? I mean, there's no minute um, hand here. Well, you do have a minute track here around the perimeter of the negative display, so you could actually use it. If I was to put this here, oh yeah, and by the way, it turns in both the directions. So if I were to put the bezel here where the minutes are right now, when the time elapses, it will go around here and then I can see here on uh, the minute track of the bezel how long it has been since I first put the bezel at that position. But yeah, the bezel itself, it sucks. Now you might be wondering which button do you press to get the light on the display, well, you don't press any button at all. Instead, you kind of just knock on the display, I guess, and it lights up. So, 
that is quite interesting. Now, I've never seen that before actually, um, and it's very easy to use, so props to Seiko for doing that. Now, you do get the watch on a black silicon uh, strap. It is very soft and very comfortable, uh, and I don't have anything else to say about it really. Just a basic Seiko strap. So let's put the watch on my wrist and I'll show you how it wears on my 19.5 centimeter wrist. And you'll see that even though it is 50 millimeters, it wears a whole lot smaller than that. So there we go, here it is on, as I said, my 19.5 centimeter wrist. It wears a whole lot smaller than its 50 millimeters in diameter would suggest. As you can see here below, it has two out of three uh, bars here in the battery. A segment which means I'll have to charge this thing up soon and that's very easily done just go out or just put it near a window and it'll charge up quite fast so the Seiko Digi Tuna is it worthy of the Tuna name well the Tuna is is a watch that's synonymous with, with quality and kind of being the most tough Seiko analog watch there is um, this I don't think it really has those uh, those attributes to be called a tuna, but of course it does have a tuna design, so of course that's why uh, they chose the tuna name. I just think it's not that good of a watch in terms of the quality and stuff like that because it's basically a more expensive G-Shock and at this price you could actually get a, a G-Shock Square with both Tough Solar and Multiband 6 which is a radio receiving technology, which this watch just doesn't have. Uh, so, I mean, this watch, if the design is compelling to you and you love the Tuna design, I mean, of course, buy it if you want to. But for this price, I'm just saying there are a whole lot of watches out there that are indeed quite a whole lot better than this watch is. That's not to say it's a terrible watch, though. Um, it's just... It's not up to par with G-Shocks at this price point. So what's my conclusion? Well, my conclusion is if you like this watch, if you like this watch's design, I mean, go ahead, purchase it. But, but if you're not after this Tuna design and you're just after a nice digital watch that has a lot of features and is very durable, well, you could get a better watch by going with a G-Shock Square. So there's that. Uh, so what do you guys think about this watch? Please do feel free to comment down below. Like and subscribe if you would like to see more content just like this. And I'll see you in my future videos. Bye bye.